Hey guys, this lesson we're going to initialize Direct3D within our Win32 window. There's not a lot to it, so let's just get stuck in. I'm going to start from the end of the last tutorial, having set up a basic Win32 class. First of all, we need to link our application to the Direct3D libraries. In the introduction, we added the file paths in Visual Studio to the DirectX SDK. However, while our program knows where to find the SDK, it now needs to be told to use it. To get the most out of the SDK, we're going to add d3d9.lib, d3dx9.lib, and dxer.lib. So we need to go to the project properties. We need to go to linker. We need to expand that. Go to input. And under additional dependencies, use the drop down, edit. And here in additional dependencies, we need to type out d3d9.lib d3dx9.lib and dxerr.lib OK Apply OK So now we want to create a new class I'm going to add class C++ class I'm going to call this C Graphics Eng for engine Finish. We want to now include our Direct3D headers, so up at the top we need to include d3d9.h, d3dx9.h, and our dxerr.h. We want to first create two new public functions, one called init with window handle, so bool init with window handle and we're going to add a parameter of hwnd a handle to a window and we also want to add a function called render scene this will render out our scene when we need to the two main parts of direct3d are the object and the device you can think of the object as the instance of direct3d and the device as the interface we need the object to initialize the device and we use the device to interact with the API, from drawing some polygons to clearing the screen. To store these, we use interface pointers provided by the API in the form of iDirect3D9 and iDirect3D Device9. Now we're going to want to add those to our class, so type out iDirect3D9, and that's a pointer. We're going to go call that M direct 3d object and we also want a device so it's an i direct 3d device 9 also a pointer and we're going to call that m underscore direct 3d device now we need to create some private functions we're going to create a little helper function for initializing the direct 3d object it won't be big but it wraps up the process nicely so add a function with a boolean return of init direct 3d object and we're also going to create a function with a boolean return of has hr succeeded and that takes a h result h result don't worry too much about that last function we've just created i'll explain it very shortly now over in our graphicseng.cpp file we want to first set our Direct3D API pointers to null. This is just good practice to set the pointers to null to prevent any garbage values from popping up. So our m direct 3 d object we're going to set to null and our m direct 3 d device we're going to set to null. Now I'm going to add some empty function definitions here just to save me doing it one by one. Now the first thing we need to do when initializing Direct3D is create the Direct3D object so in our in our direct 3d object function we're going to add the line m direct 3d object is equal to direct 3d create 9 and this takes a parameter which we're going to use d3d underscore sdk underscore version in a nutshell d3d sdk version tells direct 3d to use the correct version for our environment Microsoft's own documentation states the flag ensures that the header files used in the compiled application match the version of the installed runtime DLLs. 
We're then going to return whether the object is created successfully by adding return m direct 3d object is not equal to null. This is all we need to do to initialize the object. So in the init with window handle function, we need to add if not init direct 3d object return false. Initializing the device is a little bit more complex, but easy nonetheless. Just like with our Win32 class that we used to register the window, we need a list of parameters to send to the initialize function for the device. This list is a d3d present parameters. And we're going to call those presentation parameters. Again, we need to zero the memory. And we'll just add our presentation parameters to that. And the size of presentation parameters. We're only going to set three critical parameters here. However, if you do want to do a bit more research on the different parameters, I'll have a link to the Microsoft documentation on it in the info panel below. For now, we're going to set our presentation parameters dot windowed is equal to true. Remember that if you want to be able to switch between windowed and full screen within the application, then you're going to have to reinitialize the Direct3D device with new present parameters. We now need to set the swap effect. We'll just select the swap effect there, and we're going to set that to D3D swap effect underscore discard. This allows the GPU to control the back buffer. For those unfamiliar with back buffers, imagine two screens, one behind the other, and when the application draws shapes and pixels to the screen, it draws them to the screen at the back, the back buffer, then once the frame is updated on the screen, the buffers are swapped. This prevents the user seeing stuff being drawn to the screen as they're playing, which you can imagine might get quite irritating. We need to set the back buffer format to D3D FMT unknown. This will set the display mode to that of the current desktop display. Now to create the device itself. So we need a H result, H result is equal to our direct 3D object and we're going to call create device. Now for adapter we're going to use D3D adapter default. This just uses our default GPU. We want to use a hardware device type so we're going to use D3D dev type underscore HAL we need to give it our window handle, so HWND. In this instance, I'm going to tell Direct3D to use my GPU for vertex processing. So to do that, I use D3D, create underscore hardware underscore vertex processing. We can also use mixed and software for vertex processing, which is useful if you've got really old types of GPUs that you want to support. However, these days, really just stick to hardware vertex processing. It tends to be a lot, lot faster. We need to give it our presentation parameters, and we're going to give that a reference. Presentation parameters. And also the device that we want to send it to. So our M underscore direct 3D device. Now you may be wondering, what the heck is a H result? This is a return value of a com function sent from Direct3D letting us know if our function calls are causing errors and what those errors are. Com being the component object model technology used in Windows to enable software to communicate with each other. Finally, to the init with window handle function, we need to return has HR succeeded. And we're going to pass it the H result that came back from creating our Direct3D device. Now we're going to fill out our has HR succeeded function, which is down here. In here, we need to use a predefined macro to read whether the H result has succeeded or not. So we need to add if succeeded, pass it our H result, and then if it has succeeded, return true. 
Succeeded, all in capitals, is defined in the win error header file, and really it just checks for non-negative numbers, but it's far cleaner to use the given macro, so I'd advise you to keep using it. Now instead of telling Direct3D to update, we must go through various steps to render to the screen. We need to clear the screen using the aptly named clear function from the Direct3D device. We need to begin the render sequence by calling begin scene, at which point we can render our various meshes and graphics to the device back buffer, usually by traversing a scene graph or at the very least cycling through your meshes and rendering them individually. Following this, we need to end the scene using a call to the device's end scene function and finally call the present function to present your nicely rendered world to the screen. So in our render scene function, we need to add mdirect 3 d device and call the clear function. We're going to use zero so it clears the whole back buffer. Zero again to use the whole back buffer. We want to use d3d clear underscore target to tell it to clear the back buffer. We need to give it a color to clear the back buffer too, which is done by using d3d color underscore xrgb. And I'm going to use 101, 156, 239, and that'll give us a nice cornflower blue. We want to use 1 to tell the z buffer how deep we want it to clear to, and the value the stencil buffer should be clear to, which we're going to leave as 0. We now need to begin the scene, so our Direct3D device, and we want to begin our scene. That doesn't take any parameters. I'm just going to add a comment here to render our lovely graphics. We want to end the scene, which again doesn't take any parameters. And finally, we want to present that scene to the screen. And to do that for the whole screen, we're going to use four zeros as all the parameters. Finally, the last part of our graphics engine we need to implement is cleaning up after ourselves. If we don't, we could leave a lot of data on the user's machine in the form of memory leaks, which we don't want. So up in the destructor of the class, we need to check for null values and then release the objects. So if our Direct3D device, our M direct 3 d device, is not equal to null, then we want to call release on it. And exactly the same with our Direct3D object. We want to use if our Direct3D object is not equal to null, Direct3D object release. All we need to do now is hook up our Direct3D class to our new Win32 class, which is actually really simple. In our application header file, we need to add our graphics engine header file. So include our graphics eng.h, and we also need to create a private pointer to our graphics engine. So c graphics engine, no, oh, graphics eng even, m graphics engine. Over in the implementation file, scroll to the top. And in the constructor, we want to set that to null. So m underscore graphics engine is equal to null. We also want to make sure these resources are cleaned up once we're done. So in the destructor for the C application, we want to delete m underscore graphics engine. Over in load window, down below show window and update window, we want to hook up our new Direct3D class. So create a new graphics engine by going m graphics engine is equal to new c graphics eng we need to initialize the graphics engine with the window handle and we need to check if this has failed as well so if not m graphics engine and then we're going to call the function init with window handle pass it our window handle if that has failed then we still need to clean up our graphics engine, so delete the graphics engine and return false. We're also going to want to add a check for graphics engine to see if it's null before we try and delete it, otherwise we could end up with some serious problems. Finally, we just need to add our render scene function to our application's run function. So below our peak message, we want to add m graphics engine 
and then call render scene. I'm also going to add a sleep function there. That just lets Windows take a breather from processing a game every frame. Now if we compile, we should see my swanky new window appear with our nice cornflower blue, which really takes me back to my days working with XNA. And that's it. So next episode, I'm going to start adding graphics to the scene. If you like this tutorial, like and subscribe to this video. If you have any questions or you'd like to see me go over anything else, maybe even see me doing something completely different like XNA, Unity, OpenGL, Java, whatever really, just leave a comment below and I'll see you next episode.